वन ऑफ द एटीन पुराणाज भागवत पुराणा टॉक्स अबाउट द ग्लोरीज ऑफ भगवान विष्णु एंड अमंग्स द मैनी स्टोरीज दैट आर मैंशनड देर इज वन कॉल्ड अवधूत गीता विच इज रियली अ नरेशन ऑफ अ स्टोरी दैट भगवान कृष्णा टेल्स उद्धवा उद्धवा इज वेरी डियर टू भगवान कृष्णा एंड ही सीक सम क्लैरिटी ऑन हाउ ही विल लिव लाइफ आफ्टर भगवान कृष्णा बिकॉज ही नोज दैट हिस टाइम इज नियरिंग एंड 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 सो इन रिस्पॉन्स भगवान कृष्णा टेल्स हिम अ फ्यू थिंग्स विच विल बी ह्यूजली हेल्पफुल टू अस इन रिस्पॉन्स टू उद्धवास क्वेश्चन अबाउट वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ द लिमिटलेस रियालिटी भगवान कृष्णा टेल्स हिम टू थिंग्स कन्फ्रंट अ मैन हु इज इन सर्च ऑफ ट्रूथ दे आर परसेप्शन एंड इन्फ्रेंस परसेप्शन इज वॉट ही कैन परसीव विथ हिज सेंसेज and inference is what he conceives with his mind the fearless ones who are not afraid to follow their quest their search to the end they look for me the human mind comes to the conclusion that i am something separate from the things that can be perceived when the mind is illuminated when the senses are awake when the eye sees or the skin feels it's not on its own accord but because of something else some other power which has got to be present and this is inference at which the mind arrives and because of perception which is the reality around us and inference which is the thinking based on reality this goes further and deeper into the real nature of perception and with these two both perception and inference pratyaksha and anumana the wise understand the truth which is myself and he explains further so for anyone who's exposed to the puranas there's always a story within a story within a story and the same thing happens here so here bhagwan krishna tells uddhava so once upon a time there was a conversation between yadu my ancestor and datatreya who was an avaduta avaduta is a sanyasi a monk yadu was wandering and he came across a young man who was naked and was walking without fear recognizing him as an avaduta so certain monks who do not wear any clothes or wear just a basic essential and asked him you appear to be a happy man your face has a tranquility which can be seen only in one who has found inner peace while people in this world run after transient things like wealth and the pleasing of senses you seem to stand apart the joy you seem to have is reflected in your calm face and if you would be willing enough will you tell me how did you arrive at this state the tatreya said this was called out by me from various sources I finally reached the end of my quest and in my search for peace and truth my teachers have been many I will tell you who they are who taught me how to live without being affected by desires and he lists his many teachers of which there are 24 these 24 were my teachers who my mind chose as my gurus from their behavior i selected for myself the lessons which were essential for the advancement of my search after truth and i will tell you what lesson each one of these was able to teach me one bhuhu the earth even if oppressed by the things of the world the firm person never moves away from the right path the power of enduring anything is what the earth has taught me the wise person is always interested in doing good to others and is convinced that he is born on this earth for a definite purpose as a human being and that is the lesson i have learned from the mountain to stand firm and to be unmoved is the lesson 
both the earth and the mountain have taught me my second teacher has been air vayuhu a person should learn to live with the barest minimum which is needed for him to survive there is no need to indulge even though placed in the midst of the objects of the senses one can learn to live without getting attached to any of them the wind taught me this lesson that just like the wind blows through different places but is never attached to any spot the person who sees this is able to appreciate that the atma which pervades the body has to pass through different stages of childhood youth and old age just like the wind there is no need to linger on any spot or any stage but just pass through each and every stage knowing fully well that all of it is not real and one can easily pass through the world without getting deeply involved and dependent on any stage this i have learnt from air vayuhu my third teacher has been space akashaha when the wind blows a number of clouds are found all across the sky and it seems to us that the sky is covered by these clouds but in reality they have not covered space there is no contact between them and the sky likewise the limitless reality brahman the five elements that have been used to form this entire universe also form the body which is made up of these five elements but like space brahman pervades everything including the five elements and the presence of the five elements is not opposed to the understanding of space space is apart from the visible world which is born from it and there, there is no contact between space and the other elements space accommodates fire air water and earth and so i learned from space that that the atma accommodates everything including its many manifestations water apaha the waters of a river are ever pure full of love for mankind sweet in nature and apt to purify those who come to it the good people of this world are like the river which cleanses all they do so by their sight their touch and their words and i've learned to flow like the water five agnihi fire which is full of its own light consumes everything but is not contaminated by what it eats its heat is enough to purify what it consumes and so the person who has his wealth as tapas religious disciplines will glow like fire untainted even if he enjoys the things the world has to offer he will not be sullied by them because he will purify them even as fire is concealed in the wood because that same wood catches fire and the fire didn't come from outside the potential for fire existed in the wood likewise the atma that pervades the body and is not visible but always present i learned that all things can serve me and that i illumine everything chandrama the moon in observing the moon i learned a lot when we follow the waxing and the waning of the moon we see that from the new moon stage when there is nothing visible in the sky to the third day when a thin sliver is seen there is a change in the appearance it grows bigger and bigger and finally on the purnima day the day of the full moon it shines in all its glory then from the next day the glory becomes less and less until we do not see the moon at all referred to as the new moon day so this might lead us to thinking that the moon grows and stops growing and gets smaller and smaller and finally is no more and even so the various stages of the human life birth growth and decay 
which the body goes through do not affect the atma so the person seems to be born grows into youth middle age old age and seems to decay and finally die but all these stages are really like the waxing and the waning of the moon and do not apply to the moon the atma being eternal and indestructible the atma remains unchanged even after the cycle of changes just like the moon seven ravihi the sun the sun absorbs the waters with the help of its rays and when the time comes gives it to one who desires it and wants it he is never interested in the water except with the desire to do good to others likewise the really wise person is never attached to the things which gratify the senses he takes them so that he may give to others and sees them benefit by what he has collected like wealth and so on another lesson learnt from the sun is when the sun is reflected in different shaped vessels or in puddles on the ground then the reflection is not the same as the sun the differences in the reflections do not indicate the presence of many suns atma being one seems to be different but in reality it is the same atma in all forms and related to the sun is the example of the flame when the flames rise from the fire in a continuous flow no one knows how it begins and how it ends the particles in the fire which burn and produce the flame are kindled they burn for a while and then die but the flame is so steady and continuous that no one is able to trace the birth and death of an individual particle several drops make up the river the flow of the river is continuous and time which drives everything to its finality does not reveal to us the course of the individual drop of water the river flows and that is all that is perceptible through the endless journey of time the atma assumes several bodies which each in itself is born and dies but as a whole the atma continues its journey without any interruptions eight kapotaha pigeon from the pigeon i learnt the lesson that too much dependence on anything or any person will cause pain and unhappiness and there is a small story that goes with it there was a male pigeon and a female pigeon and together they had built a nest on top of a tree they were absolutely devoted to each other they did everything together whether it was flying or perching on a twig lying down in their nest eating or hunting for food if at any time the female pigeon wanted anything the male pigeon would try his utmost to get what she wanted and so they lived happily in their nest in course of time the female laid eggs in the nest the eggs hatched young pigeons emerged who were soft and so tender and the parent birds spent all their time in looking after them and deriving so much happiness the young ones were learning to play and gradually sprouted wings they delighted their parents with their attempts to fly once their parents had gone out to collect food for the young and these young little pigeons were found by the hunter the hunter placed them in his net after collecting food for their young the parent birds came home and were completely distraught with grief that their young ones had been caught in the hunter's net the female pigeon was so overcome with grief that she rushed into the net wanting to be with the young ones and was trapped the male pigeon came by saw what happened and began to lament about the misfortune that had befallen him my dear wife who meant everything to me is now going to leave me and will go with our children and i lived only for their sake what is the use of my being alive and so unable to bear the sight of his dear ones trying to get out of the net the father bird also rushed into the net and was trapped the hunter came along and took all of them happily
like this pigeon, one spends a lot of one's thoughts on possessions, homes, and builds a level of extreme dependence on family and others. The birth of a human being is really a gateway to moksha. If a person does not realize this as the ultimate goal of human life and gets involved with the dependence and management of relationships only, then he will be like one who, having begun to climb up, falls down, just like the pigeon, who could well have saved his family by collecting other pigeons, but stayed obsessed and dependent on his family in his very short life. In the Vedic vision, a family life is a vehicle for performing dharma, enjoying each other, contributing to each other, but not getting excessively dependent. So family life is not being criticized here. What is being pointed out is is how excessive dependence, not love and care, can contribute to destroying oneself. The Avaduta talks about the ninth teacher from whom he learnt, Ajgaraha, a python. I learned from the python that the python eats whatever comes in its way, whether it is tasty or not, whether it is small or big. The python never goes out of its way to get food, nor does it make any special attempt to satisfy its hunger. And so it is possible for people to be satisfied with what he or she gets and not go in blind pursuit of worldly things. The python does not grieve if it does not get food daily, but waits with patience, even starving for days together without thinking that it is a misfortune. And so, if a person can have the fortitude to put up with this fact and not think that I am being denied of all the good things in life, then this person is not going to be obsessed with the pleasures of the senses, but can learn to be indifferent and can have patience. My next teacher was the ocean, Sindhuhu. The surface of the ocean is calm and yet the ocean is very deep. When the rainy season fills the mountain torrents with water, they rush down. They do not affect the sea when they empty themselves into it. And when in summertime the waters flowing into the sea are scanty, the sea does not decrease in level. Likewise, a wise person should appear like the ocean whose surface is clear and lucid but who is so deep that no one can gauge his depth. His thoughts could be so deep that no one can guess what they really are. And since he is a spiritual giant, no one can really cross him in his purpose. Nobody can add to him, nor can anyone cause any disturbance in his mind. Just like the addition of rainwater does not lead the sea to swell, nor does the summer season cause the sea to evaporate. The sea stands in its own glory, and the wise person is also like that. My eleventh teacher was Patangaha, a moth. The moth is attracted to the flame, and as the moth goes towards the flame, it finds its death. And so if a person loses his power of reasoning and blindly pursues certain sense pleasures on the basis of how the pleasures appear, the person finds a way to destroy himself. From this teacher to the next few, the relationship with the five sense organs are being spoken of and how if one is obsessed with what one perceives with the help of that sense organ, then how that could lead a person to destruction is being pointed out. My 14th teacher is a honeybee. The honeybee collects nectar from the flowers but does not deprive the flowers of all their nectar and does not become greedy. He takes only what he needs and is careful to not hurt the flower from which he takes the nectar. And this is a lesson for the sannyasi, the monk. Likewise, when one asks, ask only so much and no more 
so that one need not embarrass the host and like a honey bee collects nectar from all flowers small and big likewise a person can cull out knowledge from the big and the small my next teacher is the keeper of the bee hive the honey bee collects all the honey in the bee hive and does not give it to others it tries to save up for tomorrow and actually does not enjoy it himself the honey bee does not know that there is someone who is the keeper of the bee hive and who is stronger than him and that all the wealth of the honey is going to be taken away by someone who is stronger than him and so a person who is always trying to save up for tomorrow not quite enjoying what he has collected and built up will have some sorrow and so this is a lesson to sanyasis monks that if you keep saving and keep some of the food that you get saying i will eat it tomorrow this is going to be helpful tomorrow there will be sorrow like the honey bee which comes across the destruction of the bee hive and so the lesson is to enjoy what is there my next teacher is the elephant gajaha the male elephant sees the female elephant who is in the pit dug by the hunter and remembering the sense of touch and his attraction for the female elephant he gets lured into the same pit so what i learned from the elephant is to not get overwhelmed by the sense of touch and seek the many pleasures that are not in line with dharma just because i have an overpowering need for touch my next teacher was the deer harinaha the deer was so moved by the music that was playing that she went in the direction of that music and then eventually was caught in a net and this example is given to show the obsession with what we hear good bad and ugly and how that can destroy us in our lives my 17th teacher was the fish minaha the fish gets tempted by the piece of meat that is placed as a bait and is easily caught so a person needs to be aware of the sense of taste the strange quality of the tongue is that even when it is starved it feeds on thoughts of food so the lesson i learned is how to have self mastery over the tongue and to learn to eat less so that one is not consumed by what to eat when to eat how to eat from one meal to the next and not use the bulk of the waking time to only think of food and so the various examples of the bee the elephant the moth the fish the deer are pointing out to how we relate to the different sense organs and how if we allow anyone to dominate us then it leads to sorrow because we feel denied the sense of smell is responsible for the downfall of the bee which rushes to the flower which bears that scent the touch of the female elephant is enough to drag the male animal into the pit the sound of beautiful music kills the deer the fish is tempted by the sense of taste and because the moth is drawn towards the flame the sight of flame destroys it and so the point that is being made is when a single sense and its potency is enough to overwhelm someone completely to the one who has succumbed to it then what can we say about the person who has been given the five senses and the many many objects of the five senses and finds no strength to resist any of them the point that is being made is that it is important to be alert to the use of these five senses and how one uses it for one's pursuits and not get distracted by all that is on offer the way in which we use social media is a case in point my 18th teacher was a dancing girl called pingala her name was videha and her profession was such that she had to make her living out of men who paid for their pleasure one night she dressed herself up with great care as it was necessary in her profession and as was her custom 
with a desire to tempt some man into her house she stood at the doorstep looking at the people passing by for a long time she waited but no one came she would go into the house and come out again and all the while she looked for someone who would look at her and come in and so passed half the night pingala was very unhappy and disappointed and her eyes were filled with tears of anger and frustration suddenly she became disgusted with herself and and she thought to herself that i have not realized that i am alone and my journey in this world is alone i have not been able to control the course of my mind and in my desire to enjoy the pleasures of the body with a man i have abandoned bhagwan and i become foolish and obstinate inside me dwells the lord bhagwan who is ever mine and who will grant me moksha and although bhagwan is inside me and pervades me i have been blind and deaf i have been going around in search of mortal men to give me happiness for the sake of the pleasure which lasts only for a few moments and then is accompanied by pain and sadness and misery i have abandoned the lord and submitted this body of mine to endless indignity this body of mine which is like a house built of bamboo sticks tied loosely and covered with a thin skin is just made up of water and blood and bones and to gratify this very body i have lost sight of the lord who lives in this body who makes this body possible and i'm not going to be foolish any more i'm no longer going to dwell on things which are transient and now i know what i really need to pursue so pingala abandons all her desires and goes to bed that she's going to have a single minded pursuit for knowing the truth my 19th teacher was a squirrel a kuraraha or a kurari this small being has a piece of meat with it birds which are larger and stronger surrounded the squirrel like animal kurari and went on pecking it it suffered the harassment for a while and held but held on to the piece of meat when it became unbearable it gave up the hold on the piece of meat and at that moment the birds who were torturing it left it in peace and so it is my clinging to the various possessions that draw a lot of people to me not everyone but lot of them and if i were to not have any possessions or not be affected by the praise of others or the criticism of others then i could be free of those bondages and that is why i look happy and tranquil my 20th teacher was a young girl kumari there was a young girl who was left alone in the house while her parents had gone out somewhere they were to come back only the next day when the young girl was alone unexpected guests arrived in her house and she wanted to offer them something to eat she went to the backyard and tried to pound some grains because there was no rice in the house she was trying to do this in secret lest her guests should know it but the bangles in her hand slid down to her wrist and threatened to expose that she was pounding the grains while she plied her pestle promptly she broke most of them and with just two bangles on her hand she continued her work even these two made some noise so she then broke one and the single bangle in her hand did not make any noise and she could do her work noiselessly the lesson i learned from this young girl was priceless living with many people will only cause quarrels and dissatisfaction even if there are two people their conversation may lead to unpleasantness later so like the single bangle on the girl's wrist it's good to be alone in this world if one desires to attain oneness with paramatma then to have single minded focus is most essential my 21st teacher was an archer sharakrit the archer when taking aim does not know what is happening around him because he is so focused and what i observed is that even when a king had passed him by the archer 
aiming at the target that nothing engaged his attention except the thought that this arrow should hit the target. And likewise, a mind which by practice has been mastered to such an extent that it has given up binding desires, those binding desires which accompany one from one lifetime to another because of the karma we have performed, that mastered mind can really be free. Because what I have understood about the mind is that it is never steady, it's very fickle and keeps projecting by moving from one object to another, one thought to another, one thing to another, ever restless. In the dream state, the mind is rarer, no doubt, but it is involved in a world of its own, peopled by its own creations. In the deep sleep state, the mind lies dormant. It is inactive, but only as long as it is in that state. This being the condition of the mind, I don't resist it, but I can also see that the mind can be free of the gunas and become pure sattva, which is only one step less than becoming one with the Absolute. Here Sattva is one of the Gunas which stand for purity, knowledge, clarity. And so that focus by constant practice will help the mind to be one with the Absolute. That is what I learned from the Archer. My 22nd teacher was a snake, Sarpa. A snake avoids the company of people since it is highly suspicious of their intentions. It is alone and has no dwelling place of its own. It never transgresses any rule and lives alone. And even so, a monk should live alone without contact with other people. He should not have a home of his own because that, that is only the beginning of many dependencies and should try to be as away from the world of people as possible by living in caves, hermitages and so on. So a word of caution to be added, given that Avadhuta Dattatreya was a monk, it was appropriate that he learnt this lesson. This lesson may not necessarily be appropriate for us who live in families and who have responsibilities. My 23rd teacher the Avaduta said, is the Dehin, the dweller in the body, Supeshakrit. This dweller in the body, when she begins to think of something intensely to the exclusion of everything else, she changes. How? Just like the worm which the wasp captures and keeps in its shell becomes out of fear like the wasp itself in course of time. And so when the mind thinks about Bhagavan with intense concentration, with single-minded devotion, then it will in course of time become one with it. The spider, Urna Navihi, taught me the final lesson. I was watching him and he was sitting quietly on a piece of a twig of a tree. Suddenly, when there was a slight breeze, he spat out some thin filament out of himself and swinging in the breeze, it reached another twig. And between the two twigs, it travelled to and fro. And a very short time, a web was built. A few days later, I saw the same spider eating up the threads and undoing the web. And soon there was nothing left of the very beautiful web it had woven. Even so, Paramatma or Bhagavan, who has no desires and is beyond the reach of cause and effect, at the end of the kalpa, which is a duration of the life cycle of the creation, there is nothing. When the equilibrium of the gunas is upset by time, it is called Maya. And Paramatma manifests himself in the form of the Mahat Tattva, and the Aham Tattva. So, all, the entire world of name and form manifests from Paramatma. And at the end of a particular duration called the Kalpa, he withdraws unto himself the universe, just like the spider. The Avaduta continued, These are the lessons which I learnt from the 24 Gurus I mentioned. And I have been practicing what I have learnt. 
This body of mine has its own lesson to teach. It has been studied by me. It is the foundation on which one's life exists. And yet when the Atma leaves the body, it becomes fit only to be the food of animals or worms or it becomes a handful of ashes. And so I give up all attachment to the body. For the sake of pleasing the body, a person spends endless time and energy. He finds a wife, son, wealth, cows, servants, house and friends. All these are assembled with great difficulty and a person takes very good care of them. And what does this body do? This wooden case created by karma of the previous births binds him to another body in his next birth. And without any consideration for the person who built it, decays and dies. Consider the person who is fond of his body. To pacify the tongue, he is drawn in one direction and in search of water since the throat is parched. The sexual desire pulls him in one way and his stomach bothers him in another way. The ears want good music, pleasant for them to listen to, and the nose wants him to provide sweet scents. The eyes want beautiful things to look at and he has to satisfy all these cravings. Like a man with many wives, a person is made to satisfy many desires at the same time. When the person was created, every person was given the power of discrimination and deep intelligence. These should help him to realize what it is that one is seeking in life and align oneself to dharma and in time to see that moksha is the pursuit. After so many births far inferior to the human status, after passing through the worm state and reptile state and then animal state, a person is granted the privilege of having a human form, a human mind and a human intellect. Why? So that he can use them properly. The body needs to be kept alive very carefully only for this one reason, to attain moksha. Because that is the only reason why we were given this form. I have realized it. I have learnt that absolute vairagya, an objectivity, a freedom from dependence. My mind is illuminated by the wisdom I have gathered from my wanderings on the earth and from the gurus I told you about. There are no feelings of I in my mind and I have not suffered from the other disease called mine. I am wandering on the face of the earth without any desire and with, without any attachments. And that is the reason why there is tranquility on my face. Yadu saluted the Avaduta with great reverence and the Avaduta went away from there. Bhagwan Krishna continued talking to Uddhava because he was the one who had narrated this story of the Avaduta Gita and encouraged Uddhava Live in the world without an excessive dependence on anything. The more you spend your thoughts on the nature of the Atma, the more you will see that it is you. Just like there exists fire inside the wood, only when the wood is churned or rubbed against each other, the fire that is the potential in the wood comes out and in fact destroys the container that is the wood, likewise the Atma which is pervading the body, when seen as separate from the body, will help you to see yourself, the truth of yourself. The love that you have to know the truth, the love that you have for me, Bhagavan, that itself will make you inquire into Bhagavan and become one with Bhagavan. And so saying, Krishna tells Uddhava it's time to part. Uddhava folds his hands, touches his feet and says that the lamp of knowledge has been kindled and given to me by you. Because of this, the bonds I had till now for my people and others have been snapped and I feel free. Please grant me only this, that I should have this clarity till the end of my life. And Bhagavan Krishna says, go ahead to Badrika Ashrama, where I once performed tapas, religious austerities, live in the forest, be by the Ganga, and you too can go about like an avaduta without any dependence on anything. We will meet again. You will reach me soon. And walked towards 
தி ஆசிரமா கால் பத்திரிகா